Hey everybody, my name is Helium Lemon 15. Today is Tuesday, January 23rd. It's um, 8.16 p.m. And um, hold on one second. All right, today is uh, Tuesday, January 23rd. It is 8.16 p.m. And I am about to start recording a game that means very much to me. If I could. Uh, for a second there, I thought my controller wasn't responding. Um, I... Yeah, I'm just... What can I say? I'm just very excited to be recording this game. Um, this game means a whole lot to me. I played it during... Um, I played it a lot during 8th grade and the beginning of high school, so... That would, that would have been 2012 and 2013. This game is probably my favorite 3D platformer, and it's not even close. I mean, Galaxy comes pretty close, and I've never played Galaxy 2. Um, but this game has a really special place in my heart just because of a lot of things. Um, I was currently watching a playthrough of Ukulele, which is, uh, which was a game created by the people who made Banjo-Kazooie, kind of, um, as a modern update of Banjo-Kazooie, but that game got a lot of critical backlash just because, uh, a lot of people were nostalgic for the original Banjo-Kazooie, and Ukulele does have some... It does... I don't think it's as well designed of a game. I think it has a lot of moves, and it doesn't always tell you what move you need for what. It also has very big levels, and the levels sometimes feel kind of big and empty. Um, but more than anything, I just have, like, nostalgia lust for this era of gaming, especially for 3D platformers. I think about this game a lot and just how cool and wonderful the atmosphere is. It just, with all like the sort of uh, animals and quirky and sort of like uh, quirky forest animals going on a whimsical adventure, like, I don't know, I feel like more games should be like that. Um, <laughs> it just, it's a wonderful, like, sort of world and story to live in, as well as just a great 3D platformer, like, Super Mario 64 walked so that Banjo-Kazooie can run. Like, that's my... I know people who say that, you know, Mario 64 is the greatest 3D platformer of all time, but this game has several things about it that improve upon Mario 64. Anyway, um, yeah, there, there are a lot of, uh, N64 games that just mean a lot to me that I grew up playing. I, you know, I was born after this game came out, but I begged my dad to get me an N64 in, like, 2012, so that's when I started playing this game. It was, I watched a lot of Let's Players, like, uh, Nintendo Capri Sun and those guys, 
and I was that was my first introduction to a lot of classic Nintendo games and you know and rare games. You know, res Rare is responsible for two of my favorite games of all time. You know, my favorite 3D platformer of all time, Banjo-Kazooie, and my favorite 2D platformer of all time, the original Donkey Kong Country. Um, so here we meet our main characters, Banjo and Kazooie. Um, a bear who plays Banjo and a bird who plays Kazoo, a technically a Breagall. And um, Bottles the Mole, who's going to teach us a bunch of new moves. So this is kind of the tutorial level of the game. Sure is a strange looking buddy, Banjo. Can it talk? Matter than you can, Doggo Boy. What was all that noise about? Where's my sister Tootie? The ugly witch Gruntilda. So yes, we have a green witch. It's clearly a reference to... The Wicked Witch of the West. I like how Banjo's arm is going through the fence. Yeah, his arm is just kind of clipping through the fence. I will go through the tutorial section of the game just because it kind of feels like a rite of passage. Um, see you soon. But yeah, I just have a lot of like nostalgia lust and that is a made up word that I am coining right now that is a uh, portmanteau of nostalgia and uh, wanderlust. How? Uh, what? Wait. Oh, oh gosh. So already having controller issues. Okay, my f controller's finally working again. Um, I've been struggling a lot with um, emulation just because my controller is a N64 USB controller and sometimes it will just stop working and I don't know why it stops working. Okay, what was that? What was he talking about? He gave us a few moves, the crouch, uh, and the camera. Um, next molehill, that would be here, right? Yo. Hmm, your jump could do with some help. Pa, what do moles know about jumping? More than you, press A to jump and hold it to jump higher. Oh great, now I can't move- oh, pff, that was part of the tutorial. Too paranoid about my controller having issues. So yeah, I have an N64, um... That's what I'm supposed to do. I have an N64 USB controller, it was pretty cheap, I got it online. Um, but I am re trying to read up on it online, trying to work what would work better. What am I supposed to do? Oh, the backflip. Trying to read up on what would work better, whether I want just a different controller or whether I want a Bluetooth controller or a wireless controller. Anyway. Now we can, we have basically a glide, a backflip, lots of, um, sort of platformer standards. I'm an extra honeycomb piece. Collect six of us to increase your energy bar. That voice sounded like, um, um, Are you sure this won't emancipate me from my ridiculous striped pants? Um, anyway, yo. Is this swimming? Fancy learning to Fancy learning to swim underwater? Yes. By the way, Rare is a British company. This was all made in Britain. Um, and the composer of this game is one of my absolute heroes. A guy named Grant Kirkhope. He's very chill. You should all follow him on Instagram. And uh, you may know him from Viva Pinata <laughs> or any of the other like crappy uh, rare games that they made for Microsoft. So yeah, that, that's the whole thing about like rare made this game, Perfect Dark, Golden Eye 007. Um, a lot of people have nostalgia for Golden Eye, but I never really played any like you know FPS games as a kid. Um, I always only really only played Zelda games or platformers. Um, but I just, 
I love 3D games, like just immersive worlds, and I really feel like I haven't done a proper 3D game since, like, um, Mario 64. And, uh, and Majora's Mask also. Um, but this game, it's, it's difficult. I was on the fence about doing this game or, like, you know, a lesser known game or a game that I haven't played before to, like, do a blind playthrough and just see how it goes. Um, I chose to do this game, honestly, on a whim, like, I knew I wanted to do a new Let's Play, and honestly was kind of overwhelmed by all the choices, e either of, like, you know, classic games or games that I totally haven't played before. Um, but I wanted to talk about this game and just how much it means to me. Um, you'll find plenty of other things to climb. Just making sure I don't miss any of the uh, six honeycomb pieces that are here. God, it feels good to be playing this game again. Just so many of my favorite games are N64 games. And there's a certain kind of, like, Britishness about this game that I really love. Just, like, the, the, like, there's a lot of nature and greenery and, you know, natural environments. Um, I know Rare kind of tends to, like, go half and half with, um, like, beautiful, like, natural en environments. And, uh kind of mechanical industrial environments, like like the factory levels in DKC. I don't know. But I have, like, I love the sort of whimsical atmosphere of this game. And it sort of reminds me of, um... Was that all I was supposed to do? It sort of reminds me, like, I don't know, like... It's hard to say exactly what. Am I still supposed to do the same thing? Or do I- oh, I have that now. We're beating up a carrot. I still don't have the midair. Try my fearsome forward roll. I want to learn to fly now. It's me too, man. Me too. Ball. It's just a leak or an onion, I think. I'm not sure if it's a leek or an onion. Ball would be a, a play on crying while you cut onions, probably. Yeah, the combat practice is okay. It's not like we're going to be doing that much combat in this game. Collywobble is a cauliflower. Make sure you eat your vegetables or fight your vegetables. <laughs> Eat your vegetables or beat your vegetables. I guess you could say. There's a honeycomb. That's it, you've learned all the basic moves. Meet me at the top of Spiral Mountain and I'll tell you what to do next. But I'm missing a honeycomb piece. Didn't this happen last time? I'm, I'm like, where's the last honeycomb, man? Maybe if we get to the top of the thing. Oh, wait, it's over. Wait, so if you walk up the hill and you go over by this waterfall sort of place, kind of like the waterfalls in DKC3 almost. Um, anyway, I was saying something about the, like, rare has, like, natural levels and, um, like, indoor sort of mechanical levels. And I do think some of their indoor mechanical levels are okay, but I just kind of prefer the outdoor natural levels, and I think a lot of people do, because it's like, you know, being outdoors is nice. Like, it kind of makes you happy, and it's like being out, out in the beauty of nature, and, like, would you rather spend, like, an afternoon in the park, or would you spend it in a factory? So it's like... Anyway, we're finally going to get to see the, um, really radical awesome, uh, hub world of the game. Which is, uh, 
I love the glowing emeralds. It's like the Wizard of Oz reference, like, was too subtle. They needed to add glowing emeralds to hit you over the head with, like... No, I don't know. I, I never actually realized, like, you know, oh, emeralds, like, Emerald City. Anyway, yes, this next uh, bit of music is amazing. It's like, oh, the, um, Grunty's Lair is just a... Uh, like the um the fat bears picnic no the bears picnic whatever that song is called don't 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 you know it's like a it feels like a song that you would go around singing as a kid rescue me you will not dare there's many dangers in my lair hurry congo push that switch i'm okay Banjo, help! So if you don't, uh, if you don't win the game, uh, Grunty becomes beautiful and your sister becomes ugly, which is uh, awful. But um, so let's start uh, exploring this area. One of the coolest things about this whole game is that you'll be wandering around an area. Why can't I jump? Okay, you'll be wandering around an area, and as your scenery will change... You found a jigsaw picture. Stand on the... Yeah, well, I haven't found a jigsaw yet. I have not found a jigsaw. There'd probably be one right there, yeah. Let's see, you got, a, like, a pumpkin with fangs? Oh, I ha I'm holding down R, that's why the camera is being so temperamental. I'd say this camera is okay. Like a lot of old games struggled with having a camera in a 3D environment work efficiently. Also, all of these uh, collectibles and things have silly eyes, and they start talking to you with like a little voice. Like the jigsaw is like me 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 me. It's it's the teacher voice. It's that one Germa video where he's like, you walk into a classroom and then all the kids are still. Making a lot of noise, and then you just have to stand up there and be like, me, 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 me. Except it's much higher than that. And it's like, and all the kids will just stop and stare at you like, what the fuck? Good old Germa. One Jiggy. Jiggy. I like how you can clearly see the seams. Like, it was several like, square-shaped textures that they just kind of stitched together. Ooh, that looks kind of like a Spyro level. It's, like, green and blue and a little bit purple. It could totally be a Spyro level. I, uh, don't know much about the Spyro games. Oh, yeah, you can see the seams and the textures, like, so clearly. I wonder if that's just an emulator thing. Again, I'm, I know I'm playing this on an emulator. It's because, like, one, I'm not at home, so I don't have a console or a TV on me. And two, like, this is better quality if than if I was to record it using uh, composite cables and a capture card. And three, I don't really use my capture card anymore. It's, it's collecting dust. Um... So I feel like everybody already knows um, Banjo-Kazooie so well. Um, I feel like, yeah man, I wanted to do this LP back in high school. I mean, back in high school, ironically, I was a lot busier and I had a lot more like homework and stuff and, well, sadly, actually cared about school a lot more. Um, but like, I would have, like, in high school, like, I would have, like, been like, oh, I have a story for this part of the game, and I have a story for this part of the game, because it was kind of still fresh for me back then. But, like... I don't know, I don't... I Nothing's coming to mind. I don't know if it's just because I'm older, or because, like, I'm not in, you know, my home city anymore, and I just don't feel as, like, close to my memories. Which can be a good thing. I mean, I, I know that, like, 
If I recorded this LP at, like, as a high schooler still, I probably would, like, totally cringe. Like, I can't, like... I, I really can't watch any of my... Oh, text... Oh, wow! These texture is issues are great. Can you hit the switch, not me? I would really appreciate if you hit the switch, not me. Like, I can't go back and rewatch my Mario 64 playthrough because I was in high school and, like, had crushes on people in high school and my voice was still- my voice was still kind of hitting like, not really, but, you know. Okay, Germa. Me, 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 me. So sue me for being thorough, I just want to make sure I know what the plan is. Look mate, how many artifacts do you have to, do I have to steal before you trust me with one of these jobs? I'm just saying I want- <laughs> We're gonna get there, we're gonna get the treasure, and what else- <laughs> That wasn't even a good noise. And the most important thing is that we get the treasure, so be in your A-game, we go now. I'm gonna drive the car today because it's my birthday. How come I can't do any of these voices, like, as well as I used to? I threw it to the side. Was it still good enough? Oh, Chimpy liked Tonga's orange. Chimpy helped Fat Bear and Bird. Awesome. Again, I'm just glad that my controller's working with this emulation thing, like... I've had some not-so-great experiences with this controller. Um, I'm actually currently not using Project 64, but... You know, I, Project 64 worked for my Tigger's Honey Hunt playthrough, so there's a chance that I can get it to work again... Um... Without getting a new controller, but like... I'm sure I'll find a way to like be able to afford a new controller and like still be able to eat and like get, a, get through the semester and everything. So I'm just so glad to be playing this game again. Watching that uh, playthrough of ukulele just gave me that kind of nostalgia lust for like going through like a 3D environment and like making progress and, like, finding new things, and, like, exploring 3D environments. I don't really know if I'm explaining that well, but made, it made me feel like, man, I should, I should do that, um, oh, I don't have the ground pound yet. Man, I should finally do that Banjo-Kazooie playthrough. I was debating, you know, it's either gotta be this, or, you know, Kirby, or Ocarina of Time, or something. Also, you have to jump and, like, dodge his orange. That's, like, basically all you have to do. I'm gonna move back slightly. Okay, I'm still gonna get hit. Yeah, it was either, like, Kirby 64 or Ocarina of Time, or a couple other games that I was considering doing. And there's even some games that I never, like, played before that I want to play. Like, god, this list is so long. Like... Even some of the weirder games, like uh, Chameleon Twist 2, 40 Winks, which never actually saw an N64 released, but there have been like homebrew like ROMs of the N64 version of uh, 40 Winks. I mean, the N64, it's basically like there's already a PS1 version of that game that like was commercially released. It wasn't, like, a super, like, successful game or anything. It's, like, a pretty mediocre, like, platformer compared to this. Because this is, honestly, you know, just the gold standard of platformers. Um, we can't do anything here until we get a move. We can't even get that mumbo token. No, I'm kidding. We can get that mumbo token. Can we do, um, we can do this. Bling, bling. Da, 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 da. Go. I, I love the chord at the end of that. Da, 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 da. It's like that sort of like 
joke chord that you went here at like the end of uh, jazz music. I think it's just funny because it's an un unresolved chord. It's like a dominant seventh. So it's like, why not end with like something more satisfying? Like, why not have it just dun 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 dun, dun, dun and then end it? Like it does in Tui. So I always forget to get this honeycomb piece. And if you don't remember that honeycomb piece, that's like, uh, I don't know if you permanently miss it or you just have to exit the level and re-enter it. But I was worried about permanently missing it, so. Um, where do we get, okay, let's go over here. Just explore this level. Here's some giant ants or termites. I think they're termites. I never really knew the difference between an ant and a termite. When I was a kid, I thought the difference was just that, like, termites had wings and ants didn't, and also termites ate wood, which of course they eat wood, but, you know, everybody knows that. We are racing through this level, because most of this level is pretty easy. The part where you have to get turned into a termite is pretty hard. That sounds useful. How does she do it? I love Banjo. He's so goofy. Banjo, I think, is, like, secretly, like, a beach bum. Like, he's he's totally from California. Even though I know he's supposed to be British. You know, he kind of remind, reminds me of, like, you know, the country bears... Um... There was that one, uh, ride at Disney World where there was, like, a, a bunch of animatronic bears that played bluegrass. There was also, um, that one ride at Disney World where there was, like, uh, you rode in a log. And there was, like, a kind of, like, a lot of, uh, animals that talked to you, like, woodland animals, I'm just gonna call them. Oh, this is a thing. That's super awesome that we got that. Um, Talon Trot is the most useful item in the whole, or ability in the whole game. Um, it will allow you to run super fast, and it will also allow you to travel up slopes super fast. And this game has no stamina meter, so take that ukulele. Also, yeah, ukulele is obviously named after a musical instrument as a reference to Banjo-Kazooie. Like, there's so many things that are just, like, one-to-one, -one, like, an allegory, I guess you could say, between ukulele and Banjo-Kazooie. Like, the quills in ukulele are just the notes from Banjo-Kazooie, but they're, you know perma-collect instead of being tethered to the live system. And yes, I know I didn't need to use, like, big words like tethered and perma-collect. Perma-collect isn't even a real word, I just made it up. But also, like, how the, um, whatever it's called, like, the lizard wobble... Oh! You're right here. The lizard wobble is just like the talent trot, except... You know... Laylee rides Yuka like a wheelie or something. Yeah, Kazooie, you're getting your head slammed. We're absolutely slamming your head into the ground. I hope you like it. Uh, and we have lag. But that's okay. Lag makes the experience more authentic. No, really, I, I wish it didn't lag. It's an, it's an emulator. Why should it lag? Because there's not enough space on my hard drive? Like, it doesn't make sense. Um, so in recent news, I have been playing Epic Dumpster Bear, and I think that's kind of like a, a, the game that, like, I was playing it earlier tonight, and I bet that game, like, secretly made me think of this game a little bit. He's a life. Because it's a game about a bear, and it has it's 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 a two D platformer. It's kind of um almost Mario three meets Donkey Kong Country esque, but it's like with really crappy physics and like really crappy like Unity graphics of like mountain like wild animals like 
there's lions and alligators and uh, of course the main character is a grizzly bear it is a very meme worthy worthy game i think the game was probably just conceived as a meme and then published on steam but it got enough you know first for whatever reason that game has a sequel um so yeah, we have to look for Mumbo tokens, that's kind of a shame, but uh, I will continue talking about Epic Dumpster Bear. Um, that game, I have been dying a lot and raging a lot with that game, but I managed to beat the first three levels. It's like, you know, generic grassy level, and then there was a snow level, and then there was a sand level. The sand level had lots of, like, Egyptian theming. It had, like, obelisks in the background and pharaoh statues and pyramids. I think that made me think of, um, Gobi's Valley just a little bit. I mean... I mean, every desert level in a video game is kind of the same, so, like, you know, why, why did it remind me of Gobi's Valley and not Shifting Sandland? Or not, um, Angry Aztec? But, um... I think secretly I have a lot of nostalgia for this game. I mean, not so secretly because I've been told multiple friends that I think that this is one of my favorite games of all time. And I uh, will continue to tell people that it's one of my favorite games of all time, uh, even though they didn't ask. I, w I will tell my teachers at school that this is my favorite game. No, I don't know. I will, I will write a final paper about Banjo-Kazooie. God, I wish. Sometimes I could, you know, just... I wish a lot of the times that I could just talk about my real passions in school. And, like, this right here feels like my real passion. But, you know, I just kind of have to save this for, you know, oh, do this in my free time. You know, do this by myself. Heck, I don't even talk to my girlfriend a lot about video games. I mean, I try to, because she wants to hear about, you know, what I'm passionate about. She really does. But, um... You know... I have, I have my, you know, quote-unquote real things. The real world. Which is not a bad thing. I mean, I do enjoy, uh... What I... I'm not even going to say what I do for a living, because I haven't figured out how to make a living, but what I do in school, which is creating art. I don't love school, though, and... I mean, I'm currently getting a master's, which is better than a lot of people, so I'm, I should consider myself lucky that I'm even getting a master's, but, um... I don't think I can keep going after this. I mean, don't know what I'm considering as a career, like, you know, teaching? Maybe. I think I could possibly teach, but, you know, what if I want to, like, teach English or something? I don't know why I suddenly want to teach English, but, you know, I, I only have music degrees, and now I'm suddenly feeling like I want to do something else, so. What is that green thing hanging from, like, is that a Zelda potion? Is that just a green magic potion from Zelda? My friend Grant, he mostly plays, like, a lot of modern games, like, uh, uh, Elden Ring and Tears of the Kingdom, but lately, for some reason, he's been like, oh man, I really want to play Ocarina of Time, you know, and, and I've already talked about it, but, like, Ocarina of Time, I want to do a playthrough of that game, because Ocarina of Time like, saved my life when I played it for the first time in 7th grade. This game, I'd say, is another game that kind of helped save my life. I mean, I hated middle school. High school wasn't as bad, but, like, like, no matter, like, how much, you know, kids at school made fun of it, or, like, my parents didn't really take it seriously, like, video games have always been, like, my main passion. So... You know, just the fact that I get to talk about playing video games, and play video games and talk about it, um, feels really special. And I'm glad I get to do this and share it with you all. 
This is gonna be a long video. I mean, I just, I'm on a roll, so I kind of want to finish Mumbo's Mountain in this video. Maybe I'll split it up into separate parts. But I would really appreciate... Wonder why it's called Mumbo's Mountain. It feels like a really lazy, I mean, this is kind of a very generic level. And they named it after, you know, the shaman character who, te uh, who turns you into different animals. But he doesn't, he's not a very prominent figure in this level. Like, you see him at the top of the mountain, presumably he owns the mountain, but he's one of many things on this mountain. I mean, might, have, might as well call it, uh, Conga or whatever that big gorilla is called. Conga's Mountain, and I wouldn't bat an eye, because it's just, you know, there are several characters on this mountain. I mean, this is kind of the most generic level of the game, so I really don't have any complaints about it being a generic level. I'm just... I wish I knew where to find a fifth token, because, let's see, I already looked in there. This is gonna bug me. I could look over here. It always, like, frustrates me when I get stuck on, like, the first level. It's like, dude, don't get stuck on the first level. You should know better. Did I learn the ground pound? Yes, I did learn the ground pound. So I can do the grunty switch. So... The Grunty Switch, there's one in each level. It's not a collectible, but it will open up a path to a collectible in the castle. And it will freeze super long and have a, you know, a very awkward pause and all that, but uh, it will help you complete the castle in the long run. Okay. I've, uh, already... Fuck, fucking camera. I've gone on this hill. I've gone up that hill. I've checked this area several times. Maybe it's just a draw distance thing. Um, I will cut until the point which I find this damn token. Sorry for swearing. <laughs> See you then. Oh my god, get in. Oh my god, there's one behind the structure. The freaking Stonehenge looking thing. Camera, please stop changing. I'd really appreciate that. Alright, that was kind of anti, um, anti-climactic. So, let's just go and get changed into a termite as fast as we can. Then brush our teeth, do our laundry, etc, etc, etc. Fix dinner. I haven't really even had dinner, I just had a piece of chocolate cake. But, um, lately it's, like, I usually, like, eat a lot because I have a big appetite. I mean, I guess I snack a lot. But, like, lately I haven't been eating on a normal schedule just because I haven't been as hungry. I don't know what that is. I don't know if that means I need to, like, go outside more and, like, get more sunshine. Oh, God, that was weird. Or get more sunshine, or get more exercise, or something, or maybe it's just because, you know, it's winter, it's, it's cold. I should be hungrier. I mean, I did was craving dessert, so that is kind of a hunger, but, you know, I didn't even have my dinner, which was supposed to be Chili Mac, which I was supposed to fix myself out of a can. Um, yes, I call make, making food out of a can, fixing it myself. Um, this is the area where save states really come in uh, handy, but I will be... Oh god. The controls for the termite are very unsatisfying. I pressed the A button, but somehow it didn't register. Or maybe I pressed it a moment too late. Okay, that wasn't so bad. Yeah, the controls for the termite are very unsatisfying. But I think I'm past the worst of it now. Oh, please don't hurt me. Thank you. Oh, you did hurt me. 
I thought because I'm a fellow termite, you wouldn't hurt me. So if worst, uh, worst comes to worst, we've got all 100 notes, and that's very good. That means that if we die, uh, it will keep our high score of notes. And if we got the max high score, then we won't have to... Yeah, it's a very... Like, the note collecting system... I get why they changed it in later games. Um, in Banjo Kazooie, or in Banjo Tooie, rather, the sequel to Banjo Kazooie, which I've still to this day not played, um, they kind of put them in clusters of five, and it somehow makes uh, exploring and looking for all the notes less satisfying because you just kind of get five at a time. Um,. And in just a second here, we should be done with Mumbo's Mountain. Is this all 10 jiggies and all 100 notes? And um, should be two honeycomb pieces also. Yeah. Nice, 20 minutes. Um, I've certainly done better, but um, it's, it's entirely possible to beat this level in 15 minutes or less. I'm sure less than 5 minutes if you're a speedrunner. But, um, I'm gonna have to call it quits for there. I love you guys, and uh, thank you so much for watching this episode of, uh, this episode of Banjo-Kazooie. Yes, that's all. Thank you guys for watching. Good night. <laughs>